Number four is constraint-based modeling. Now I'll take care of constraint-based modeling and parametric modeling together. MicroStation allows you to drive geometry with variables and store them as name sets that are called variations. Let's take a look at this in the MicroStation Connect Edition. So here we are in the MicroStation Connect Edition. You can see the Constraints ribbon tab. It's not hidden away or difficult to locate. If you note the solids and surfaces, parametrics, and the use of variables is built right in. You will notice two sets of constraints for 2D and for 3D. Keep in mind that constraints determine the behavior of a design. When the value of a variable changes, the geometry updates. If we take a look at an example here, in just the W6 beams, there are several sizes and variations. However, the basic design remains the same. Now, designing each one of them individually would be a time wasting experience. Variables, constraints, and capturing design intent and creating an adaptable parametric model is the way to go. So, how do we get these variables and constraints? Let's create something simple. I'll jump to the single angle views. I know what my variable should be set to to create the geometry. I also know that I need to have several variants available. Variants are collections of the local variables. If I was to take a look at the American Institute of Steel Construction steel tables for this single angle, there's a couple sizes that I would care about. In our case, the L6 by 6 by 9 16 in a 12 foot length, one in a 24 foot length, and also the L6 by 4 by 3 8 in 12 foot and 24 foot lengths. Here, we've created the variables for time D for the depth of the member, BF for the width of the flange, TF for the thickness of the flange member, TW for the thickness of the web, and L for its overall length. I'll start off by modeling some basic geometry, around 6 inches in each direction. I'm not going to worry about the accuracy or making these lines exactly parallel to one another. We'll let our constraints correct that. I'll begin by using geometric constraints with the fixed constraint on the corner. You can see it's easily added. I'll also add a fixed angle constraint to the width of the flange. And now, working our way around the geometry, we'll add perpendicular constraints. You get to choose how much effort you put into the geometry. At any time, an engineer can quickly check for the degrees of freedom. Note that there are four degrees of freedom for this particular beam. It's not fully constrained, but our dimensional variables and constraints will help with that. I have a set of variables called a variation, a placeholder that's already created for the L6 by 6 by 9 16 in 24 and 12 foot lengths. I'll add the dimensional constraint by the element. We'll begin with the width of the flange, the thickness of the flange member, the thickness of the web, and the depth of the member. Now we'll take our profile and give it life as a 3D parametric model. We'll rotate this to an isometric view and I'll select Extrude. I'll make sure Parametric is on. 
and set the distance for extrude to be equal to the value of L for length. Now, once I've applied those different variables, and if I made a mistake and I wanted a, a different variation, no worries. All I have to do is simply change the variation and apply it. And finally, the variation is applied to the generic model to turn it into an instance with the desired size and shape. Clearly, creating a new variation is merely a matter of putting together a set of numbers really a set of variables. They're superimposed on the generic model, and there's no repeated CAD modeling of the same geometry. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.